live from Washington, D.C., Jay Sekulow Live. Phone lines are open for your questions right now. And now, Chief Counsel for the American Center for Law and Justice, Jay Sekulow. Let me tell you what's going on here. The Green New Deal was introduced, which is socialism on, on, in an unprecedented way. And, of course, it's being promoted by a member of Congress uh, who is ran as a Democratic Socialist Party member. And I'm holding, putting it up right now. I'm holding it for a radio audience. You can hear it. I'm going to let everybody on TV see it. Happy birthday, Karl Marx. In solidarity, DSA, that's Democratic Socialists of America. Bernie Sanders was the second ranking or second highest vote getter in the Democratic uh, convention. He is a socialist. He doesn't hide it. Here's what he said. Are you a socialist? Yes. Why are you running as an independent? Well, the same reason that Mrs. Kunin and Mr. Smith are parts of the capitalist economic system. They're not running as capitalists. They're running as Democrats and Republicans. Socialism, to me, means a democracy with a small d. I am not affiliated with a political party. I am an independent who happens to be a socialist. I am outraged about the system that we're living in. Okay, so, you know, look, this is not stuff we're, that we're hiding, but here's the problem. This is what has the foothold of the Democratic Party. This is where their energy is. This is where their momentum is. And I'm not talking about, you know, elections. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. The very core of a constitutional republic, which is what the United States is. We are a constitutional republic. And by the way, that's even different, different than a straight democracy. Okay, we are a constitutional republic. It's not majority rule here. Okay, you have representative government which has served us very well since our founding. But now you've got, you know, Representative Cortez and Senator Sanders proudly boasting their socialism, and you've got members that are running for president of the United States adopting socialism, and they put forward the Green New Deal, which is absurd, if it's a fair way to say it. Yeah, it, it is absurd. I mean, but it, here's the, the, the bonus for uh, conservatives out there. Uh, one, I, I don't agree with... Um, Sakat uh, Shakrab Barty, who is the chief of staff uh, for Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, who says that uh, we are we have to get rid of the quote radical conservatives among the Democrats holding the party quote hostage. Radical conservatives among the Democrats. I'm trying. Who is that person? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I I mean the old school Democrats, the ones saying you know abortion and infanticide is fine. Um, so that's not far left enough for them as well. Uh, but it, it goes on. I mean, what are they voting on? And this is in the House and the Senate. And, you know, if I'm Mitch McConnell, I say, let them vote on it. Yes, right. you know, let, let them, them vote, vote on, on this, please. Uh, <laughs> put them on the record because they will be voting, and, and this is all true, in favor of abolishing air travel, outlawing states, forcing all American homeowners at their own expense to retrofit their houses, putting every miner, oil, oil rigger, livestock rancher and gas station attendant out of a job, spending trillions and trillions more tax money, and also very popular, fully government-run health care, which somehow, as the Wall Street Journal notes, is a prerequisite for clean for a clean economy. Yeah. So this is this is this is the plan. So Andy, you review that plan and you look at England after World War II, and this is what they did, and it didn't work out no, very well. England was a shambles after World War II, not only as a result of the war, but re as, as a result of uh, of many things, the the difference in uh, classes had basically been abolished, and Clement Attlee succeeds Winston Churchill as pres as premier, prime minister, and we begin this idea of the welfare state. And the welfare state falls flat on its face, and England is suffering for years and years until finally Margaret Thatcher comes in and says with the Conservative Party, let's create wealth, let each person be the arbiter of their own conscience, let's not be immoral about the, the idea of creating wealth is immoral. What a ridiculous thing to say. All right, we've got a lot more to discuss. This, these are big issues we're dealing with, and these are big policy issues. This goes to the fundamental of who we are. In America, what are we? We are a constitutional republic. We've got a petition that we want you to sign. You're going to win this by educating the American people and having your voice heard. We are going to defend our constitution. That's what this petition is all about. We encourage you to go to aclj.org or call the number that's on your screen. Sign that petition now. We'll be back with more in a moment.
The United States of America must never become a socialist nation. Yet the radical left is trying to force a new socialist agenda on the American people. The Green New Deal and other extreme measures. We already know that the liberal left has embraced born alive abortion and the anti-Semitic, anti-Israel BDS movement. And now this dangerous push to embrace socialism. At the American Center for Law and Justice, we've developed a five-point legal advocacy effort to defeat this socialist agenda. One, expose socialism. Two, prepare critical legal analysis. Three, show how socialism subverts the rule of law. Four, battle against it on Capitol Hill. And five, hold radical left politicians accountable. At the ACLJ, we're committed to this fight, to stop this radical agenda, to stop the destruction of our Constitution. But we can't do it alone. Sign on today to our petition to stop the radical left socialist agenda. Add your name right now, online, aclj.org. We've been talking about the Green Dream. I'm looking at the list of members of Congress that are signed on to this. I mean, uh, Adam Schiff, Ted Lieu. I mean, members of the Senate. Senator Harris, Senator Blumenthal, Senator Hirano, Senator Warren, Senator Booker, Senator Gillibrand. So there you go, Senator Sanders and others. All of them are running for president, and they're adopting this nonsense. Go ahead, Dan. That's that's the relevant point there, Jay. This is more than a foot in the door in the oh, Democrat yeah. Party. This this has become a litmus test to be the leader of the Democrat Party. If you want to run for, for president of the United States in that party, you have to support the Green New Deal. And Jay, I think you said earlier they're trying to match the energy that President Trump was able to inspire from his base by running on on national security. I think that's correct. The difference is those policies, you know, a mere $5 billion to put a barrier on the border, those are good policies to put into statute. This, you know, something 1,400 times more expensive. And by the way, I think that $7 trillion price tag is probably too low. Those would destroy America. So, Jay, in exchange for creating some energy in their base and making this the litmus test, they're 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 running on policies that simply can't be enacted. It's a big problem for them. No, it is. 1-800-684-31. Tell us well, another I do call. think the world is ending in 12 years. Take a listen. I think that the part of it that is generational is that millennials and people and, you know, Gen Z and all these folks that come after us are looking up and we're like, the world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. And your biggest issue is your your biggest issue is how are we going to pay for it? And like, this is the war. This is no, our- she, she has been saying this is our World War II. <laughs> oh, play it later. I, I can't even listen to this. 12 years, the world is coming to an end. So then it's uh, our law and economics professor, Professor Hutchinson, if that's the case, why would we spend this money? It's not because this doesn't end it. Absolutely not. But I think it's important to keep in mind that her focus on uh, socialism and in essence, war socialism ties us back to Woodrow Wilson in the uh, early part of the 20th century. Um, then FDR came along and he learned that war socialism has legs. So simply put, FDR, Woodrow Wilson, and many contemporary Democrats are authoritarians who want the experts in Washington, D.C. to rule our lives, or otherwise we face criminal penalties. So just ask Jacob Maggot. Who is Jacob Maggot? A father of four who owned a tailor shop in the 1930s. He charged only 35 cents to press a suit. The members of the Brain Trust in the FDR administration decided that he ought to charge 40 cents for a suit. Guess what? He lost, and he was sentenced to prison for 30 days for charging five cents more for pressing a suit. 
This is an example of what uh, Ms. Cortez supports. She supports mandatory, ma- mandatory control by experts. Jerry calling from Rhode Island. Jerry, thanks for holding on. You're on the air now. Hi, Jerry. How are you doing, team? Good. Uh, Professor Hutchinson, great, great examples of history that most people are not paying attention to. The history lesson after England, I didn't know that one. Thank you for that. And I was thinking of the early 30s and 20s. What you're going to put a, a plan together for the yep. ACLG? Are, is the team going to put together what we listeners, yep. what what we can do, whether it be calling, writing, certified return receipt requested? What can we do aside from financial sponsorship? So here, here's what here's what we're going to have to do. You've got this is a this is not a battle you win in a courtroom. This is a battle you win in the courts of public opinion, in the halls of Congress. So what we have to do is have a counter narrative to this. And we are going to have a plan that we're going to lay out. That is how you respond to this. But the top of the plan is going to be that we are a constitutional republic. So what they're proposing and this adoption of socialism as a model, there's only three problems with it. Number one, we're a constitutional republic. Number two, we're a constitutional republic. Number three, we're a constitutional republic. So we're not a socialist country. Now, we're going to have to beat them in the vote, which means, Stan, we've got to win it in Congress. But you're going to have people running for this and national party platforms, and believe me, the mainstream media will adopt this as a great idea. They they already are. But we're going to have to win this in the, in the hearts and minds of the American people. It's going to be an educational effort. It's going to be a policy effort. It's going to be utilizing our vast media resources and mobilizing Americans around the country to stand up for our Constitution. This is a direct challenge to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitutional Republic. And, Dan, we're going to have to meet it head on. There's not a, there's not an easy way to sugarcoat it. That's the way we're going to have to do it. No doubt. And ultimately, Jay, it's going to have to be defeated at the ballot box. Yes. And I would just give you two directions. I mean, first of all, our piece will put out the people who have voluntarily put their names on this. This is not something that we are putting forward. We're not putting words in people's mouths. There are 64 members of the United States House, 64 members of the United States Senate that have put their name on it. Uh, f- uh, Jay, people need to get e- educated on who these folks are and make sure that these policies are not what you're electing at the ballot box. And Jay, I would add another component to this. You also have to go and elect people who will fight against this. Don't send someone to Washington. Washington, that when this policy is put forward, they yep. just stand down and let someone else take the charge. You've got to put people in Washington that will take this on head on. Martha's calling from Kansas on line three. Martha, welcome to JSECU Live. You're on the air. Hi, okay, Martha. so under this Green Deal, does this mean that we need to get rid of our Air Force? Because I'm sure Russia and China are going to do that, right? Yeah, well, one of our teams said this morning, I guess that's the end, it's called Air Force None instead of Air Force One. Because I guess you're not going to have the the president flying on it. Well, I mean, this would be devastating to the military, Wes. Oh, absolutely. If you, you, you couldn't even operate. I mean, no. If you spend 70%, which are some estimates say this is what it would cost, of your gross domestic product, you will not have any money for national defense. Uh, Andy mentioned England, you know, that the disaster of socialism for them. Other countries in Europe have tried it as well, and they're moving away from it, partly because it's not sustainable financially, partly because indi- individual freedoms go by the wayside. And by the way, there's an elitism to yeah, this, too. In Russia, when they went to total socialism, communism, yep. you still had the powerful and wealthy. They just were a clique together that oppressed the people. But at the same time, what I was going to say about national defense in NATO We are just now getting our NATO allies to pay 2% of their GDP for national defense. And the reason they could not afford to pay more than that going into this is because of their socialist policy. It would wreck wreck national defense. When you look at it, you know, again, I I point out to what what Franklin said, and that is we are a constitutional republic, madam, Congresswoman Cortez, if we can keep it, if you can keep it. And we've got it. We have to keep it, though, because it is what works. Well, it is. And, 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 you know, I see socialist countries, Greece, of which, from which my ancestors yep. derived the garbage is piling up in Athens right now. Look at what the French did with their socialist economy. Look at what the British did. Look at Venezuela. Look at all these countries in which socialism was empowered and became the government. So to say that American wealth creation is immoral and yep. that the system that made this the greatest country in the world for so many reasons ought to be revamped into this style that Ms. Cortez talks about is ridiculous. Look at and our health care system. She wants government health care run totally by the government. How many people come to the United States for serious operations? How many people go to Morocco for serious operations right. or to France or to Greece or to any place like that? Why don't we talk about that? Look, the government has two responsibilities in my estimation. I don't want the government in my business. It has two responsibilities. Defend the nation 
and deliver the mail. Yeah, well, they want to do a lot more than that. So, Harry, if you look at the proposal and you look at their platform of the parties that they're affiliating with and this shift in the – there's clearly – I mean, I guess you would call it a fight within – I'm going to ask Jordan this too – a fight within the Democratic Party here. But this move to socialism, which the president called out, but which, which these others are promoting aggressively, including those that are going to be running for president, really does put us on a dangerous path. It does put us on a very dangerous path – but also it puts us on an incoherent path. It's important to note that the Green New Deal would eliminate nuclear power, but at the same time, it is focused on reducing carbon emissions. Are the, well, are the Russians and the Chinese and the, and the North Koreans going to do all this? Absolutely the not. The Iranians going to adopt but, a Green Deal? But nuclear power uh, does not produce carbon emissions. It's very possible that the authors of the Green New Deal don't even understand that. So what are we saying? We're saying that the proponents of the Green New Deal, they uh, wish to empower analysis that makes no sense. And I said previously, their analysis is juvenile, both at an empirical and a rational level. All right, we've got a lot more to discuss. This, these are big issues we're dealing with, and these are big policy issues. This goes to the fundamental of who we are in America. What are we? We are a constitutional republic. We've got a petition that we want you to sign. You're going to win this by educating the American people and having your voice heard. We are going to defend our constitution. That's what this petition is all about. We encourage you to go to aclj.org or call the number that's on your screen. Sign that petition now. We'll be back with more in a moment. The United States of America must never become a socialist nation. Yet the radical left is trying to force a new socialist agenda on the American people. The Green New Deal and other extreme measures. We already know that the liberal left has embraced born alive abortion and the anti-Semitic, anti-Israel BDS movement. And now this dangerous push to embrace socialism. At the American Center for Law and Justice, we've developed a five-point legal advocacy effort to defeat this socialist agenda. One, expose socialism. Two, prepare critical legal analysis. Three, show how socialism subverts the rule of law. Four, battle against it on Capitol Hill. And five, hold radical left politicians accountable. At the ACLJ, we're committed to this fight, to stop this radical agenda, to stop the destruction of our Constitution. But we can't do it alone. Sign on today to our petition to stop the radical left socialist agenda. Add your name right now, online, aclj.org. Hey, welcome back to the broadcast, everyone. We're going to go in the order that you've been holding. Let's go ahead and start with uh, Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie calling in from Florida on Live 5. Stephanie, welcome to JSEC. Hey, Hey, Stephanie, go ahead. You're on the air. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. Uh, I'm concerned not so much about Cortez, but about these 64 people that have signed on to this. The plan is not pragmatic. It will not work. I think if we can show the American people how it's not going to work, most people have common sense, okay? Obviously, these people do not. I'm concerned about the five people that are running for president signing on to this. What does it say about them? Well, I asked this question during the break, and then I'll I'll start with Than, and then go to Jordan. What is the political calculus in this move, Than? Well, I think it's a short-term versus a long-term one. We talked about this in the break, Jay, but I think it's such a litmus test for energy inside the Democrat Party that that, that these candidates, they, even though they know this policy does not work, they don't think they can be the nominee without being for it. I mean, Jay, we live in a global economy. Do they really think that eliminating air travel is not going to destroy the global economy? I don't think they actually believe that. But, Jay, they're running on it because they've made a short-term political calculation in exchange for a long-term benefit for the, both the United States and the world. Quite Quite frankly, the only way to stop it is for the American people to see through it and not allow it to succeed. And they're going to come up with some, oh, well, there'll be some air travel. You know, this wants to limit as much as possible. They don't want to make it something that's required. The problem with, I, I like high-speed rail. I used it all the time when I lived in Washington, D.C., because there was a corridor. The Northeast Corridor was great. I mean, you have uh, Boston, New York, uh, uh, Philadelphia, D.C., in, in between that you have Wilmington as well. I mean, so you had a reason to have high-speed rail between these connections. And it's been fairly successful uh, for for Amtrak. I could see it, you know, San Francisco, even the West Coast. You've got major cities along the coast. Now there's some big gaps there. But you look at the rest of the country, you'd have to have some super high-speed rail 
to be competing with air travel, to not really limit the ability of business. I think technology, we're already cutting down on how many business trips we have to make where it doesn't have to be face-to-face by the technology we have to be able to have conversations face-to-face uh, through through tech. So uh, again, I think investing in that it, is, it really gets some of that accomplished. Um, obviously, foreign travel, things like that, you're going to have to have uh, aircraft involved. It's, it, it is to me, you, what is scary about this to me is that if one of these people is the nominee for president, I don't think they'll probably win, by the way, because of this kind of stunts. But they will get 40 plus percent of the American people's votes. Right. So we think, they'll, you know, as our caller said, the American people are not this gullible. Uh, 40 percent plus of the American people are automatically going to vote for one of these people, likely. Mm. Let's take another phone call. Yep. T- Tim in Ohio on line one. Tim, welcome to JSEC Live. Hey, Tim. Hey, good, good afternoon. Thank you for um, all, all your uh, support, uh, gentlemen. Uh, my, my question is this. Could this almost just be a Democratic strategy to test the waters to see how much kind of support they may have for the far this far left thinking? Well, I think what Jordan said is, is right, and that and Nathan was alluding to this too, and that is I think that they've made the calculation now that to win the nomination, they have to – appease this side of the party because that's where the momentum is then move i guess a little bit more moderate although they're trying to get rid of the radical conservatives within the democratic party which wes i'm trying to figure out who they are exactly yeah these radical conservatives. i think they're extinct along with the dinosaurs i haven't seen one in a long long time the thing about it is though i think it part of it maybe is this strategy of moving to the far left for the primary season and what have you but there's an element of this that it shows just how out of touch the left-wing progressives are with the American people. Just like the people were shocked by the New York law that allows for taking a baby's life when it's first delivered, even if it's full term, and it shocked the conscience of, of most Americans, that new abortion law, I think this kind of radical proposal also shocks the conscience of the American people, and I think ultimately it will backfire. But on the other hand, we have to be on guard against this gradual drift towards government control and towards socialist policy. This is, I think, how you rebirth a conservative movement again. I think it's the same thing with the, the abortion issue in Virginia. They push it so far. They push it so far that the, the response is that the sponsors of the bill, when they actually utter the words they're saying, they go, I'm, I'm withdrawing my support of my bill. Because they realize what they're saying. So hopefully here, this can be part of our strategy, Harry, as your director of our policy, is it's so radical, it's so extreme, although it's got a lot of support, that you hope there's some wisdom comes into this. But by pointing it out, I'm listen, I always say point to the evidence. This is one of those examples. I think you're absolutely uh, correct, Jay. But I also think that the American people should demand that presidential candidates for the Democrat nomination. If they truly support the Green New Deal, they should swear off of all air travel while pursuing the nomination. That's number one, because that would reduce the number of carbon emissions and possibly reduce the number uh, or the amount of methane gas emitted by presidential candidates going forward. (laughs) (laughs) Let me take another step. How about if you ask them this question? Andy, in a debate, do you believe the United States is a constitutional republic? I, think I, don't, th- I don't know if they would answer that that is correct. No, I don't think they would. I don't think they would. I think they, they would be constrained to say, no, it may have been once, but it isn't anymore. And as right. far as we can uh, are That's concerned, if we can reform it in our image, it will be a socialist state. That's what it's going to be. What do you think, Jordan? I, I think that uh, ultimately it is, is a attempt by... Democrat, uh, the candidates and high profile members and these leftist members. And they're going to say, you know, I think I can I can get I can I can get away with supporting this and then tampering it down. Oh, you know, the 29 year old had some great ideas, but let's let's flush those out. We flush those out. We're not trying to ban all air. We're not going to take all your cows away. We're not going to. So it's going to be trying to pivot back to the middle. This is why they've got the Schultz problem. The Starbucks, former Starbucks CEO uh, is. He is saying these people are, are have lost it to the left. He's not quite a Republican. What does that mean if he runs? They have zero chance. Right. I mean, I mean you can't. It's like what Ross Pro did to H.W. If he, Bush. It's a, if he runs as an independent. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right, let's grab another call. Lynette in New York on line four. Lynette, welcome to Jay Secchio Live. Hi, Lynette. God bless you, Jay, and all of your Thanks. staff. I uh, pray for you um, I appreciate that. regularly and support you. Thank you. And um, my. Uh, comment. I agree with uh, when you mentioned that this is a, a golden opportunity to 
uh, basically strengthen the conservative side. My my concern is that we have to use this as an opportunity to actually communicate and actually think something that we have not been doing um, as a as a whole in our in our culture for a while. We 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 just have these sound bites and we have um, people that present an idea and then we concentrate on how it makes me feel and things like this. So we have to we have to use right. this as an opportunity to actually look at facts, actually sit down and talk about things and not just label people, label You're 100% um, correct. or label concepts. Uh, uh, on my job, I, I was working uh, side by side with a socialist. I was the only person on the whole road that knew what a socialist was. You, you are, let me tell you, Lynette, you are, you are exactly correct. And what we're going to do is outline what the Socialist Party is, what socialism stands for, how it has failed. And when they keep talking about this in the United States of America, how we should never be that. We should never go in that direction. And our job at the American Center for, again, this is not a courtroom battle. This is the hearts and minds of the American people. This is a battle in the in the in public policy. This is a battle in Congress. We're going to have to fight for the very foundation of what is the United States of America. We are a constitutional republic, as as Franklin said. It is a constitutional republic, madam, if you can keep it. That's going to do it for the broadcast today. We're asking you to do something. There's a petition. The number is on your screen, as is the ACLJ website. Go to ACLJ.org. Stand with us. We're going to have to educate. We want to get hundreds of thousands of signatures on this petition. So we encourage you to go to ACLJ.org or call the phone number that's on your screen and stand with us as we stand for America. We'll talk to you next week. The United States of America must never become a socialist nation. Yet the radical left is trying to force a new socialist agenda on the American people. The Green New Deal and other extreme measures. We already know that the liberal left has embraced born alive abortion and the anti-Semitic, anti-Israel BDS movement. And now this dangerous push to embrace socialism. At the American Center for Law and Justice, we've developed a five-point legal advocacy effort to defeat this socialist agenda. One, expose socialism. Two, prepare critical legal analysis. Three, show how socialism subverts the rule of law. Four, battle against it on Capitol Hill. And five, hold radical left politicians accountable. At the ACLJ, we're committed to this fight, to stop this radical agenda, to stop the destruction of our Constitution. But we can't do it alone. Sign on today to our petition to stop the radical left socialist agenda. Add your name right now online, aclj.org.